Welcome back to episode 5 of Isle of Scorth. Today's the day that all you coaster heads have been looking forward to. Considering I wouldn't be able to tell an Intamin from a B&M, I figured I'd leave the coaster building to someone who knows their stuff. Nerd Chacho is not only an incredible Planko builder, but he also has four years experience working in the theme park industry. Being around all that technical documentation must have paid off, because he's the best when it comes to building a coaster. Allow me to pass you over to the man himself to explain his creation for the park. Well, it certainly has its advantages, but you already know I can't talk too much about it and I'd have to kill you if I told you, so shh. But hi everyone, it's been a while since you heard my voice here and I promise I'm gonna keep this one short because my last one was nearly four minutes long. Now, this time Moon asked me to put a coaster into this new park with some requirements. It needed to be a hyper that behaved like a giga, but it wasn't as tall as a hyper and a B&M, so not a mega light. So, to my mind, that translated into just rip off Mako and Candemonium again. So that's what I did. So, here we have a non-hyper B&M that's got its awesome first drop. It's got your usual parabolic airtime hills. It's got an overbanked turn or two. It's got a properly profiled hammerhead turnaround. A twister second half and then a return to the station that does intentionally waste the energy it gathers. Just so you don't need to make those weird breaks at the end too tall. Because personally, I think they look a bit strange. But anyway... There's also a feature of the drop after the first turn in the sense that it drops even lower than the lowest point of the first drop and that's something that I particularly love on Phantom's Revenge. Now this coaster is capable of running three trains thanks to a point of no return block break uh, but it's just comfortable with two as well. I mean it's fine, do what you want. Uh, so the maintenance area is also in your typical place but sorry Moomin, you've now got the challenge of making that accessible to everybody. Now I wasn't tasked with designing the station for this one so I can't wait to see what Moomin comes up with because this park is already shaping up to be such an awesome one. Uh, I mean the whole idea is looking so original, it's not your typical park in any way, shape or form. So anyway I promise to keep this one short so I'm going to stop talking now but guys thank you so much for having me, I'll see you all again soon, bye bye. And there you have it, Isle of Scorth has its first of two coasters. Thanks so much to Nerd Chacho for taking the time to build this, and if you're a fan of ultra-realistic mega parks, go and check out his channel by clicking the card in the top right now. With the coaster in place, it's time to start theming. For now, I'll only be working on the coaster station and brake run, as there's no sense in theming the rest of the track until more of the park has been built. I decided I wanted the station and final turn to be indoors. I used the same ruin pieces, but went for a church build, because there's nothing God loves more than coasters. To add a smidge of realism, I chose to encase this section in a show building to imply some of the ruins were recreations built later.
As this is just a lot of me building a church, let's talk about other things. How are you today? Are you having a nice day? Oh wait, I can't hear you. Okay, guess I'll just talk to myself. Hmm, what date is it today? 5th of November. I hope you're all having a wonderful bonfire night. Isn't the whole Guy Fawkes thing a bit weird? I feel like someone trying to burn down Parliament these days will be praised, not burnt at the stake. Anyway. Ooh, it's my birthday tomorrow. If you could all now sing happy birthday in perfect harmony, that would be excellent. Although never do that to me in real life, or I'll probably cry and run away. What's coming up on the channel? Ooh, good question, me. Well, after this series, if all goes to plan, we will be having a sequel to Little Rock Ridge. How exciting. The lineup is incredible, and I've already seen a few of the builds, and they're unbelievable. Anyway, less about the future, more about the present, whilst I say these words in the past. I took advantage of this gap in the wall to add a couple of windows. I used wooden pillars to outline the windows to make them stand out a bit more. As the roof is just about the only gridded part of this build, I separated it from the rest and placed it accordingly. I outlined the build with some wooden beams and pillars. To create a bellless belfry, I used pillars and more ruin pieces. I deliberately wanted the church to look oversized and ominous, or as the Backstreet Boys once said, larger than life. With the church layout complete, I finished off the show building.
Next I started work on a backstage area, and what will later become the transfer tracks. With the exit path already placed, I encased it in one of the pre-existing buildings from last week. Remember last week? <laughs> what fun we had! With this conveniently positioned piece of path with access from both the entrance and exit paths, I placed some double-sided lockers for guests to throw in their loose bits and bobs. Lastly, it's time for the queue. I added various fencing, borrowed a piece of wall from our neighbouring ride, and then covered the floor. As has become customary, I finished the final details and a cheeky TMTK pass off camera. And now I'll leave you with some beautiful cinematics. Thanks again to the wonderful Nerd Chacho, and I'll see you next week.